Great. Thanks so much for being here. My name's JD. I have the privilege of directing Effective Altruism for Christians. Uh, it's so good to see all your faces from so many different countries here. Um, so I want to um, I, I want to welcome you if you're new to this community. This is a wonderful community of hundreds of Christians around the world who are passionate about effective giving uh, and radical generosity and highly impactful careers. As I mentioned earlier, we've had over 150 signups from all walks of life in over 18 countries. There are many who are active also in this movement who aren't here today. But if you are, welcome. I'm so glad. But why are we here? What is this all about? First, we're here to celebrate the impact that God is having in the world, including through this movement, through the Christian Effective Altruism community. And again, this group has many of the most wonderful people and generous people you'll ever meet. Many of you have dedicated tremendous amounts of money to tackling the world's most pressing problems. In terms of direct donations, our survey tracked that just last year, you gave millions of dollars to effective charities, translating into literal thousands of lives saved from, from disease and despair. You also gave a very healthy sum to missions, uh, sharing the message of hope and life that we have in Jesus. So thank you for that and, and thank God for that. So we're here to celebrate that fact. We're also here to challenge ourselves Christ gave everything in love and service to the world. And as Christ's followers, we're called to give everything in love and service to others. But how do we do that best? A lot of people have different ideas. That's where effective altruism or EA comes in. EA is two things. One, it's a community. And two, it's, it's an idea. It's the idea that we should use reason and evidence to find the very best ways to improve the world and then to act on that. Good intentions aren't enough. We need to use our God-given uh, resources, uh, especially our brains, to think critically about how best to do good. As C.S. Lewis put it, God told us to be not only as harmless as doves, but also as wise as serpents. He wants a child's heart, but a grown-up's head. Using your heads means applying the best evidence, whether quantitative or qualitative, secular or scriptural. And we can't do this thinking alone. We need this community to help us spot our own blind spots and our own biases. We also need to use this community to encourage each other to take drastic steps, radical steps, to be generous to others. And so this, this isn't easy, which is why um, we're, we're here for each other. So why are we here? We wanna celebrate what God's doing. We wanna challenge ourselves, but finally uh, we, we're here to act. We're here to change the world, uh, to put it one way. And one community member who's already doing that is Ed Michelson. Uh, an inspiring guy who himself started a charity. I want to pass the mic over to Ed to share a few, world, a few words about the unique opportunity we have uh, to make an outsized difference. Yeah, well, uh, thank you, JD, and a uh, huge, huge uh, hello to all of you. It's uh, brilliant to see you here. Uh, as JD said, uh, my name's Ed. I'm, uh, I'm beaming in from Norfolk. I normally live in uh, Southeast London. I've got about three to four minutes just to quickly say why I think effectiveness is incredibly important and why this moment at the moment, uh, this, this time that we're alive is so important. It's such an incredible opportunity. Well, I just want to quickly explain how effectiveness has had an impact in my life personally. I grew up, my dream was to be a doctor and to be a missionary doctor. I wanted to go overseas and use that to share the gospel. I actually changed trajectory when about 11 or 12 years ago, I realized I could be one a missionary, I could be one doctor, or I could stay in the UK, I could earn a good salary, and I could use that to fund 20 or 30 or 40 indigenous gospel workers instead. And I said, hey, this is a great multiplier. Why would I be just one person when I could have 30, 40, 50 times the impact through earning money and donating to support others? So that was why I set up a charity called 500K, which is all about sending church planters in India. Why do we have such an opportunity available to us at the moment? Well, some things just blow my mind. There is incredibly good research available at the moment, which shows that as little money as £3,000 with an organisation like Against Malaria Foundation can save somebody's life. Through giving £3,000, we can save somebody's life. Or take another example, the, the space that I'm in, a similar amount of money, £3,000, 
that can lead to a church being planted in a community that has never before been reached by the gospel. We live at a time when our money can make such an amazing difference. That's pretty incredible, but this is a point that uh, J.D. was saying to me earlier. If we were just alive, if we could just affect the people alive today, that would be huge. The difference our giving can make. But when we think of the amount of people who are going to follow us in this world, he showed me a statistic. There's 100 billion people who are alive before us. In all of history until now, there's been 100 billion people alive. There are 7 billion people alive now. There are 6.75 trillion people who are likely to be alive in the future. That is a lot of people. And at this moment, everything we do now, it doesn't just affect these 7 billion who are alive. It can affect these 7 trillion who are to come. And this just blows my if it, If we were just in this game for what we could do right now, that would be huge. But think about all these future generations. And, and, and personally, my conviction, when I think about all these people, this is 6.75 trillion people, each for each of whom Christ died. Christ looked on each of these people and said, you are worth me dying for. That is the value that God sees in these people. Each of them is God's child. So if there was just one person for whom we could make this impact, I would be blown away. But there's not one, there's potentially 6.75 trillion. So for me, effectiveness matters. It really, really matters because the stakes are high. And what we do now can have a huge impact. It can have a huge knock-on impact, not just for lives that can be saved, but for uh, potentially even um, the planet even continuing. Is there going to be a nuclear war which is going to uh, blast us back into the Stone Age or wipe out humanity altogether? Is there going to be a, a, a virus that is so powerfully created that no humans can with, withstand it? Our species is wiped out. Is there going to be an artificial intelligence takeover? Possibly something like the Terminator, possibly nothing like the Terminator, which is going to wipe out our species. This is what is at stake. And what we do now matters. And for me, my take is, what about my additional take? You know, I'm, I'm an evangelist. I run a mission organization. What about the values of our world? What is our world going to look like in one or two or three or four or five generations time? Because that culture could then determine the culture for all the rest of these uh, trillions of lives? Is, this, is it going to be a world which, where people know God and love him and are transformed by him? Or is it going to be a world which is locked into some despotic totalitarian state where humans don't get to flourish, but instead no misery? Um, I've already massively run over my time allocation, so I'm going to wrap up. But uh, my final thought was uh, this verse from uh, Luke chapter 12, where Jesus says, those to whom much has been given, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. I'm convinced that we have been entrusted with a lot. We have never lived in a society that is richer, that has more information about how to help and where to help, and that has more potential impact on all the future generations to come. Much has been given to us and much is being expected. So we better give our all and we better give our all as smartly as we can. Thank you. Pastor Ed, thanks, Ed, for that really uh, inspiring intro. And I'd love to just give a brief roadmap of what the rest of the day is going to look like. If you check your email, you should have gotten one from, from me with your agenda and the attendee profile sheet. The agenda has everything you need. The conference is structured like this. We have three separate tracks with three separate Zoom links. Every talk or workshop is on one of those links. This is the main link, link A, and our intro, our outro, everything, uh, also our keynote will be on there, uh, all the plenary sessions. If you have any questions about that, feel free to, to reply to the email that, that was sent to you, um, and Vesa will, will respond to that. But also, um, we have an attendee sheet. Please look through that. Please book one-on-ones throughout the week. That's one of the highest value things about this event is really the, the community that it, that it creates. So be a part of that community creating force and book some one-on-ones. If you need an introduction, I'm happy to introduce you to someone. As a guide for the speakers and moderators, uh, you have your speaker prep form and your guide, uh, your, your moderation guide, which has everything you need. Again, if you have any questions, let Vesa or I know. One big thing is this is a tight conference. We have about 16 talks and workshops, I think, or 16 plus panelists and speakers and 
close to that in talks and workshops. So um, it's important to end on time. Please leave at minimum a five minute window at the end of your session before the next session on that Zoom link. So that's a hard cutoff. Moderators, feel free to be uh, gracefully assertive about that. And I just wanna pray for just this conference uh, now. So if you would, please pray with me. This is an ecumenical group, um, but we're united in faith in Jesus. And I'd love to just pray that God would bless this time. So pray with me now. God, I ask that you use this conference to bring immense goodness into the lives of everyone attending and into your world. I pray you give us wisdom to discern your will and the strength to do it. And when we fall short, and I know I, know I will, I ask that you remind me and remind all of us of the forgiveness and love that you offer through your son, Jesus. Amen. So next up on our, on our agenda is speed meetings. So if you're here and you'd like to participate in speed meetings, please stay. We'll get started with that in one minute. I'm going to end the recording here, um, but feel free to attend whatever you can attend or not attend what you'd like not to. So yeah, thanks for being with us here today.